Hello everyone, thank you for coming. So we are going to talk today about complexity and how it is the enemy of security. So before I start, let me introduce myself. I'm Zach, I'm working at WIB, I'm uh, leading the security there, I'm head of uh, research. I have more than nine years experience as an attacker and developer helping companies all over the world. I, on my free time, I'm a CTF player with 5BC. We won second place on Google CTF on 2019 and I think also in 2020. I joined WIB a year ago uh, in order to supply the very best API solution there is. What will you learn during this session? So first of all, you will learn how complex, complexity of modern IT creates security gaps. <clears throat> how I exploit your environment and also other attackers can exploit them. We will discuss about real life cases that we saw during 2022 on companies that are aware of cybersecurity, they are aware about APIs, and all of them in the last year. And the last thing that I'm going to talk about is how thinking like an attacker can prevent the next hack in your organization. So complexity, what is it? So we see the first equation. I think everyone in the crowd is able to solve it. Now I'm looking at the second one, and I think I don't really understand what it actually means. It has a lot of symbols. It takes me a while to just understand the problem. And this is the problem with complexity. Uh, when you don't fully grasp the problem, you, when you don't fully understand what resources and what thing you use, it's really hard to secure them. So why is it the enemy of security? In short, is unexpected behavior. So I'm giving this analogy. Uh, we are all crossing the roads. Crossing the road is kind of dangerous. There are cars there. But we are feeling pretty safe crossing it because we can expect the behavior. We can expect when there is a red light that the car will stop and we can just pass through. But <clears throat> problem starts when there are unexpected things that are going to happen and attackers are going to exploit them. So those are three verticals that we saw during the last year. We had some more, but I think those one are the most interesting to talk about. So first of all, we have complex resource. They often seem simple and seems harmless. We have transition. We are all doing some sort of transition between new and old API. We're introducing some new technology to our system. And we need to watch out for those transitions. There are a lot of places where we can fall through the cracks. And the last thing are collisions. Collision between features, collision between technologies, collision between securities and collision between teams. So one thing that we saw on one of the, our biggest cli client was he were allowing us to upload XLS file. Now, XLS file seems innocent. We're using them every day, and we don't really understand what the problem is. So first of all, I don't know how many of you knew, but XLS file is actually a zip file first. The program has to unzip it, which exposing the application for zip bump problems, which creating the denial of service um, attacks on the service. So we were pretty easily able to exploit the XLS, the innocent XLS file and stop the application of the user. The second thing is XLM file. XLM file are exactly like XLS file, but they have a small piece of code inside that the program can execute. Now, it's not enough protecting only from the file ending, because 
the function on the server side, it can recognize when there is an XLM file and execute that code. And all of a sudden, we have an RC on uh, the client. The last thing is kind of tricky. We got ECAR files, uh, which those files are generally can be recognized by antivirus. So we can know if your organization is using an antivirus on your server or not. So it's a very, very good way to just get a lot of interesting information about you. Transition. Are you sure you didn't forget anything? Having the old API still working is a very, very bad idea. So in one client in the diamond industry, we were able to leak information, leak PII information about clients, about their business, through the old API. The new API was perfect, had all the best practice there is. But using the old one, which were exposed and we were able to do it with our credentials, we were able to leak all the information. The second thing that we saw was we were able to do things that the old, that the new API weren't allowing us, and we could mess with the information inside the table. Now, that, were, that was a crucial mistake because in the new environment, we were able to create an XSS attack and basically get credential on the account of the admin on the new application. So when you have old APIs and new APIs, you need to test them and you need to test them in all the environments that you have because the attacker will do that extra mile, will try to find where is your blind spot. Another thing that we saw, that's the last thing that we saw is basically a bad practice, a very, very bad practice that we can see, I think around 30 to 40% of our client, their development uh, environment are open to the public. And not only that it's open to the public, it's exposing everything. I mean, we are, when we are developing, we wanna see the error trace that something happens, so if it's open for all the uh, IPs in the world, and if I can create accounts there, so thank you, I'm gonna do it, and I'm gonna research and find all the vulnerabilities that you have. Not only I can do it very easily because I see the error trace, so I can know what kind of function that you are using and what kind of problem it's causing, and then when I go to your production, I'm just exploiting, and you don't even know about it. So it's a very, very bad practice that we see occurring after one client and another that we need to change. One more thing that we saw is account takeover. Oh, I spoke about it, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> so, collision. Don't break someone else's feature when one feature run over the other. So we saw, <coughs> we saw an example of that when we are we saw in a new API that a client has introduced, uh, he added a new field to a table, and doing so, he didn't test it in all the other APIs that he has and all the other features that he has, so we were able to create an XSS on the alert message because he didn't test that field. So it's a pretty easy attack for us to do, and it was pretty easy to see just by getting an alert that that new client has a new API, and they didn't do the all the tested and all all the tests that were required. So one programmer basically broke the other programmer feature because of that. Because before that feature was fine, no security problems there. Another case that we saw was SQL injection. I know 2022. We think we are safe from that. No, we are not. Um, we were able to execute S SQL injection using the CSV file uh, when we were able to download all the transaction of the user and on the filtering types, uh, we were able to insert our own code and what happened was that the injection and the order code were 
<coughs> we, we were able to see it on the downloaded file, on the download CSV file, and the program just wrote the error and wrote whatever SQL query we did. So how can I protect my organization? So I thought about it, and I thought about it really, really hard about giving you some good advice of how you can take an active approach. And I, f I came up with three things. So the first thing is involving developments. Uh, we are, as developers, we need to start asking questions and we need to get outside of our small cube or outside of our room and team. The second thing is to challenge our environment and introduce them to sophisticated attackers. And the last thing is providing visibility to our environment. Developers are uploading new APIs every day and security teams are not aware of those. So we need to make our visibility instant. So you need to start asking more questions and you need to start asking them now. So first question, is my feature affecting others? I mean, if I'm gonna do some change to the feature, will someone else in my organization gonna be heard from that? Um, second question, do I know all the workflow of my feature? You know, thinking of, oh, I'm handling 99% of the flows, it's gonna be fine. No, it's not. It's not gonna be fine. I'm, as an attacker, gonna create that situation in order to exploit you. I mean, you need to think about all the possibilities. The last thing is, do I handle all the types, all the input types that I'm having, and also including the one that I'm not expecting? So sometimes, as a developer, we are querying the database or we're taking information from a, an other function and we're thinking, okay, they handle it. I can <clears throat> guarantee that string will be whatever that string is supposed to be. So no, don't do it. I mean, think about, think that you are not expecting if that th string all of a sudden could be an integer, if that string that were, is a string might be an integer, that other function can interpret as an integer. There are a lot of different types to manipulate inputs, and we, as a developer, need to think about it. Embrace negative testing. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So you need to bring some richer research groups, some attackers outside of your organization to test your environment. It's your QA that you are doing has a very narrow view of your application of your application, and you need to be bringing someone from the outside to test everything that you have, and you need to do it annually, you have to do it two times a year, four times a year, your API, your environment is changing all the time. So you need to find out what are the gaps that you have. Another thing, and the, that kind of approach, I know it's not for everyone, it's for very mature companies, is Chaos Monkey approach introduced by Netflix CISO. I actually met the guy, very, very interesting approach. Uh, <clears throat> this approach is basically saying, what will happen if we had a monkey behind the scene, just changing the cables, shutting down servers, changing the formation of the flow of information. And when you are able to create some chaos in your system and you can see your system is able to handle that and the service that you provide for others is being unattached and undamaged, then you know that you have a very, very, very strong program. You can't protect what you don't see. So let's say we have a house and I know about that entrance. So. I can put some some guy, you know, to protect it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry <laughs> about you. <laughs> but on the other entrance, if I don't see it, everybody can come in. So 
you need to have full visibility of all your API, all of the ways someone can enter your organization. One of the cases we saw we had <clears throat> were in one of their clients, they have one system that were monitoring, but they didn't look on all the subdomains that they have. And that system were deploying in four other places that they weren't aware of. So we just said, you know, that system is open there and there and there. And all of a, all of a sudden, we just shortened the attack surface for, um, about 30, 75% down. So just knowing what you have and be on alert on that, that's going to provide a lot of intel for you. And if you are having visibility, so why not looking through the attacks that and uh, all the traffic that you are having? So if you can bring those kind of things to your organization, I think it's going to make the difference. So thank you so much. Uh, I was uh, Zach. I'm leading... Uh, the security group at the uh, WIP. Thank you. Here at the start to introduce you. Um, that was that was fantastic. Do you, um, do we have some questions? We've got time for a couple of questions. Not everybody at once. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about uh, leaving some? Um, um, vulnerability on uh, on an application or API to detect that there is an attacker and also about an input approach. So, so I knew about a few companies in Israel that were taking the honeypot approach. And what I can say is just in the market perspective, that kind of approach wasn't successful. Just in the market perspective, I don't know what kind of problems maybe clients have to implementing that kind of solution um, as an idea. It seems like a great idea, but in the reality test, it didn't work. So I hope that answers your question. Someone else? Small. Yeah. Hey, um, what do you think are the main uh, risks when it comes to APIs? Like if you if you could update the OWASP top 10 for APIs, what would you change? Or like the main thing that you would change? So one of the things that we saw, maybe one is working? Yeah, great. Okay, great. So one of the things that we saw, and it's kind of hard to do automatically is logic attacks just attacking the logic of the API. I'm not talking about BOLA cases, which are kind of like logic attack, but I'm talking about things that you as a developer, about some workflows that you didn't thought about and then creating a lot of problems. Uh, we have the beautiful use case where we were able to print money over a bank and everything was fine. I mean, we got 200 on all the requests and Basically, they had a flaw in the logic. And when you have an API there, I mean, everything's going to hit you 200. So that's what th that's the thing that I think I would put inside the OWASP. And I think I will change or put injection higher now. Uh, and I would say that injection change we're changing over the years. I mean, it used to be very easy. Now it's really, really hard. And there are a lot of new verticals, very, very interesting verticals, uh, of which we can see injection. And because especially in Nexus, there are a lot of uh, a lot of techniques and also a lot of defenses. And you want a l there are a lot of ways to bypass them. And using the API can help. I hope that answers your question. That's a really great response. Um, we've got time for one or two more. Yep, um, I'll go here because it's closer, but I'll give it to you. Hi, um, would you mind to talk about how you do your hacking your procedure? Because uh, in the API, like in, in my company, we also have a like basic penetration test with the, or maybe you have, you provide some kind of like 
minimum tool to scan uh, the API first. Like uh, in my company, where you have qualities to scan uh, the API to make sure everything is correctly configured. And uh, would you mind to just talk about how you uh, process your, I would call it ethical hacking, something Sh like that? Sure. And, uh, and so we, we could understand a little bit more like what we are missing and maybe we can use your service. Thank you. So I think in one word is experience. I've been attacking for a long time now and it's kind of like an art. You can sense problem and you can imagine them and you can think what will go wrong. And I do a lot of things that I'm doing just by a sense that I developed and a lot of the time where we're coming to clients, they do have pen testers and they do have division of pen testers that are trying to attack the application. A lot of the times, the pen tester has a list of things they need to go through and they just go in one API and to another, tack, 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 tack. And sometimes they don't think about the whole full change that one API can, it can do some harm to another API and sometimes the change of the attack is very complex. And only by experience and only by th things that you heard and by you keep doing the thing that you're doing, uh, you're able to find them. I hope that's fine and you can hit me at Web uh, booth and we can talk more about it. I have more thing to say. Fantastic, thanks. Uh, well, before we go to our next question, is Raja Lakshmi here? Oh yeah, do you want to start getting ready? Yeah, we'll take a question while you prepare. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, um, what do you advise to um, you know smaller companies that can't, uh, they, they, they can have like uh, one or two pen tests uh, a year, but beside that, what do you usually advise uh, to them? So it's depends, if, if you can have a pen test and you can, can't can also have some security security product inside your, organization so just have a high alert of communication between you guys when you develop the three question for you I think it's a great way to start and just better communication bet you between you guys the developers and also DevOps teams and whatever teams that you have great thanks we'll have I think we've got one time for one last question um, anyone do you want to go back to the slide? You've got the three, the three things yeah. you can do. Uh, after that, I think, yeah. So, um, oh, yeah, oh. that's the questions, and then, okay, um, yeah. yeah. So then, um, what what would be the first thing that people should do if they if wh when they go back tomorrow or go, or Monday, what should be the first thing that they do following up from your talk? So I think I think they should have a conversation with their developers and introduce better practices to their organization. That's what I think would be the best. Start the conversation. That's fantastic. Okay, thanks again. Uh, great talk. Thank you. Thank you.